Right, welcome back, folks, for our final game of the morning session. This one's going to be a great one featuring one of the strongest North American players, Alec Seaholm, who sits alone atop this field at 9-1 and one against Moise Ula Baig, who is a name I have seen around in so many different places. I am so excited to finally get to see him play. Moyes coming from Pakistan has been Pakistan's highest rated player or second highest rated player, kind of flipping back and forth for a while, has won world youth championships before, has won lots of major tournaments overseas. And now finally we get to see him on North American soil. Very excited for this matchup. Let's not hold back anymore. As soon as Moyes sends this little text message, we'll get to the action. Matt Kanick joined by Chris Kanick for the morning session. And what a treat for this final game, Chris. Yep, this one should be a good one. It's really cool to see players coming from overseas to participate in this tournament. Um, you know, Scrabble can be played anywhere, obviously. So really cool to see representation. Yeah, I mean, the, the Scrabble growth overseas is something we talk about frequently on this stream. I know Scrabble has grown enormously in Pakistan over the past decade or so, but with visa issues and travel issues in general, it's not often that we get to see these players meet over the board. I'm very excited to see Moyes represent his country and a fantastic blossoming Scrabble scene in Pakistan here at this tournament. Moyes will play first. Alec to respond in this one, and a blank on the first draw for Moyes. Can't script it any better if you want to. Welcome to the screen. A-F-I-I-O-S blank. The pull for Moyes. And there is just one playable bingo here. It's mm -hmm. tough to spot, but I expect a player as good as him to know this word. Now, will he spot it? Yeah, I don't want to pat myself on the back. I saw that one right away and was thinking if there was any others. Um, it's a tough one for sure. I don't want to give it away in case chat wants to take some stabs at it. I'm sure somebody's gotten it there by now. Uh, but yeah, it's either that or a significant downgrade if you can't spot that one. Yeah, the, uh, I'll go ahead and tip it now that chat is about to give it away, but the blank is an M, and the bingo, Mafiosi, M-A-F-I-O-S-I, -S 76 points, doubling up the F. Moy's anagramming skills, word knowledge, put to the test on turn one. <laughs> yeah, I would not want to be in this position, getting put on the spot right away. Everyone watching... Uh, I know my nerves might break in this situation. Hard to know if Moyes is feeling nervous. Body language certainly seems pretty relaxed, but this is definitely a test. First game on the stream. Can he do it? And it's always interesting to see how players approach these turns. You know, I think most North Americans just methodically put their letters in alphagram order, A-F-I-I-O-S blank, and would look at this rack this way. Moyes just put them down in the order they appeared and has stared at his tiles. There is no shuffling. There is no alphagramming. There is just him trying to tap in to his brain and figure out what to do here. Yeah, I, I would expect to see at least a little bit of moving the tiles around. You know, I know if I get stuck you know, in bingo study or something, I will just spam the shuffle button and have it auto shuffle the tiles for me in case something miraculously springs out. It's a little bit less useful when you're staring at a blank, though. You got to sit there and think through, okay, what are all the things this could possibly be? And it's tough to iterate through every single, you can probably skip all the vowels here, but it's tough to iterate through all of the reasonable con consonants and find your seven out of this rack. But he is going to have to find the seven if he wants to optimize Ooh. this move. If he doesn't bingo here, we're playing IF for 10. And there it is. There it is. Rack. He's too good to miss this word. Just take your time, solve it out. Now you've got to pull the trigger on it, but pulling the trigger indeed is Moyes. 76 points, and we're off to the races here. Great start for him. Good stuff. Yeah, that, that's a tough one to spot. That's that's a real test. Sit down at board one, knowing you're being streamed out to a bunch of people. But good stuff. Finding that, pulling the trigger, putting it down. And he's aced his first test. Yes. Uh, crucially, does not expose a T. That is the mm -hmm. only bingo that would allow Alec to bingo out of A-E-I-O-U plus R-S. 
without the T there, this turn becomes more challenging for him. And facing a big deficit kind of has two approaches here. One is play off OU somewhere, try to bingo next turn and catch right back up. The other is score a little bit more. URAO plays beneath the first four tiles of Mafiosi, making MU, AR, FA, and IO. That's 16, but blows up a nice synergistic rack, holds just EIS. Chris, you think fishing here is probably the right gambit for Alec, or would you try to score a little bit more? I think the fish might be better, especially because URAO gives up some really tough underlaps, uh, especially if Moise pulls any of a few of the clutch consonants that could go there. Um, keeping three vowels and two consonants two consonants isn't completely ideal um but you know if you can score eight playoff ou keep one or two of the consonants that are on the board open for yourself i think that's probably what i would do and i probably wouldn't spend as much time as i should on it um but i'm pretty sure i would end up plunking ou somewhere uh, where is actually an interesting discussion though because there's quite a few places where you could do that you could play FOU, giving yourself the back hook uh, for six points. You could score two more points in a couple of spots, or one spot rather. Um, lots of options, and all very similar, but I wonder which one Alec will go for. And, and this is a huge decision for Alec. You want to optimize every decision you make, but an even bigger decision as we look at Moise's next rack. Quinn mm -hmm. pointing out in the chat, thank you, Quinn, uh, that Caboodle playable Ooh. for Moise right now, K-A-B-O-O-D-L-E. So if that O is obstructed, no bingos for Moise. But if the O stays open as it does here, Caboodle, oh. a potential bingo bango for Moyes. You passed your first test. Now, Moyes, can you pass test number two? That would be a statement play to come into this game. Find Mafiosi, which is pretty good, but then to find a Caboodle through that O, bingo bango on the first two turns against a national champion player, that would be a statement for sure. Let's see if he can pick this one out. I impressed me on his first one. Let's see, Moise, let's see what you got. As Alec has found a bingo into his fish, setting up Spirea as soon as he draws it. Mm -hmm. So whether or not Moise plays Caboodle, a bingo waiting for Alec. Yeah, and he's got a few other things sitting there for him as well with the Spirea rack. Alec will almost certainly be bingoing, but let's look at the more interesting position. Uh, Moise obviously needing to find Caboodle here to find his optimal play. Uh, a little bit of shuffling, but as with his previous turn, he's just staring at the rack, seeing what he can divine from it instead of shuffling and shuffling and shuffling like some players might. It's an interesting approach to amigramming. Yeah, just uh, set the tiles there. I know Joel Sherman said on in Word Wars and Word Freak that he just kind of visualizes the letters in space floating around, bumping mm -hmm. into each other. Uh, I thought I saw Moyes with his eyes closed on his previous turn. Maybe that's what he's doing as well. Everybody's got to scramble up these letters in some way, but uh, not no shuffling, no anagramming, just staring deep in thought. It worked for him last turn as he pulled Mafiosi out of his first rack. Is he going to pull Caboodle out here? Uh, mm -hmm. There's a lot of sense. Yeah, I wonder. I know, I know my trademark move is I will sit back and I'll stare at the ceiling to kind of remove some of the visual stimuli from around me maybe he's closing his eyes maybe he's doing the tiles in space thing who knows everyone's got their thing but we'll see if he can be successful with whatever his method is sorry i got excited i saw him moving a couple thought he might have spotted it but not yet uh, he's just shifted OK over to the end of this uh, racket. O-A-K through the A in Mafiosi. Looks like a reasonable bailout. A-B-D-E-L is nice and bingo prone. You expect after Alec just made a little six-point fishing play that he's going to bingo, and a lot more floaters will be available for you next turn. So mm -hmm. you expect the board to stay open for bingo opportunities. Staying in bingo range makes sense. If you're not going to play Caboodle, O-A-K makes for a reasonable back up he's got more defensive options to ebook plays through the u or through the o in fou or, mm -hmm. or book in the same spot here is a similar play 
Uh, this makes some sense to do here, but Moyes, bingoing on the first turn, not noticing the hard to spot caboodle here, but ADEL will yield good dividends for him most of the time and good dividends here for Alec, AP Aries and other bingos set up on his rack now. Yeah, Caboodle is so difficult to spot, you know, starting that rack with a K, much less looking through a duplicated vowel that you already have on your rack as well. Really tough spot to find. Uh, Alec has a much more straightforward play, though. He's going to drop Spirea almost instantly. And into ADEL, a second A, a second E, not ever what you're looking to do is duplicate both of your vowels, but that's what Moyes has drawn. He leaves 104 to 81 after the first two moves. And I think the S exposed by Alec makes his decision here straightforward. Crush mm -hmm. that spot and use your W. S-W-A-L-E, S-W-E-A-L, S-W-E-E-D, and S-W-E-D-E. -E. All play down from the S for 39 points. Mm -hmm. I think you're looking to undouble the vowels. This should be swale or sweal, I think. Yeah, I think it definitely comes down to one of those two. He's moved the W to the front of his rack, maybe already looking at that. There are other spots to at least give a cursory glance to, you know, overlapping OK with WOK. Not going to score as many points there for sure. He will almost certainly end up settling on swale or sweal, you know, on doubling both vowels. But I can understand taking a little bit of, of time here just to kind of make sure. But yep, yeah, swale it is, and I completely agree. And Alec, after bingoing with Spirea, has found a second consecutive bingo. He set up out rope on his rack. This is a valid word. I uh, also has a bingo down to the S in Mafiosi of Porteus, P-O-R-T-E-O-U-S. So out rope forming either O-I or I-O or Porteus, the options for Alec. Out rope scores 65 in either spot. Porteus, 62, down to the S. Chris, do uh, you take the points here, or do you knock out that S and try to limit access to the right side of this board? I think hanging the E right next to that triple word is really dangerous. Um, I think the three-point sacrifice for Porteus is worth considering. Um, out rope is a little more dangerous. Hanging an O there, P is a little less bad. Give back more points. Looks like Alex is going to go for out rope instead which i'm not sure I, I would have to think about that a little bit longer uh but it looks like he's made his choice it's actually an out troop looks like the main spelling of this word out uh, rope looks like it might be a verb but it is not this is a noun which sets uh, up some interesting back hook decisions out rope looks to me like it would take ds it does take two back hooks takes an s does not take a D, but it takes an R, out roper. Wow. And we'll see if that comes up, and if so, when, and who knows the hooks there. All right, passing back over to Moyes. I haven't even had a chance to look at his rack before he uh, plays the Volted, which is not a word. We are getting an interesting one, and Alex challenges immediately. Um, yeah, that one's going to come off. Interesting. I wonder what he might have been thinking instead of that. Gavoted, G-A-V-O-T-T-E. Yeah. I think what he's looking for here, perhaps mixing up voltage, that alphagram with gavote and gavoted. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, a lost turn here for Moyes. And what looked like it was going to be a runaway bingo bingo is all of a sudden a tight and dicey game. Yeah, chat pointing out Gatval, or however you would say that word in the same spot, maybe adding a little bit of additional uh, conflation in that spot. I'm not really sure, but either way, yeah, that one's going to come right back off, and that's going to give a huge tempo advantage to Alec. Uh, Love Volted also pointed out by Jeremy in chat. Thanks, Jeremy. Welcome. Um, that So Love Volted, Gav Voted, and this is where so many phonies come from, is just conflating two different words together. If somebody ever plays a word that looks weird to me, and I see two similar words, and it's kind of a, just mixing them together, I'm usually just going to challenge it. I understand why your brain did what it did, and that's that's not a real word. So Moy's doing what 
<laughs> we've seen many players do at different times. Love Volted, Gav Voted, conflating the two. Uh, Dilemma, thy name is Scrabble. <laughs> and a little mistake there from him. D-G-M-N-V-W-Y, a horrific post-bingo draw for Alec after a great post-bingo draw the turn before. And this turn becomes very complicated when you have perfect knowledge of your opponent's rack. You have to consider what he has, what you need to block, if anything, what you can set up for yourself, knowing that it's unpunishable. It's a little frustrating for Alec, knowing that he has no good options. You'd love to capitalize on the blunder. You'd love to capitalize with perfect knowledge and set yourself up. But this rack is so inflexible that there's not much he can do. G-Y-B-E-D, through the E and out rope, may be the best move here. But given your opponent's shown you some spotty word knowledge, I kind of want to leave out rope alone on the end and see if I can bait a, a fake hook or crush that R hook myself. Alec disagrees. Alex, like these letters are horrific, and I've got to play off GVDY. Mm -hmm. This play does win a sim with perfect knowledge of Moise's rack in there as well. So well done by Alec. And we'll see if that out rope back hook comes into play later on. But back to Moyes, who faces the same rack, A-D-E-G-L-T-V. Got to shake off what's got to be a little frustration or surprise and just make the best play he can this turn. Yeah, I wonder if Alec might be considering uh, giving that out rope back hook that doesn't exist, but he knows Moyes is sitting on the D. I wonder if he's attempting to bait Moyes into slotting that D there, overlapping the D and jived, and challenging yet another word off. Um, don't know if Moyes will take the bait, though. This is an interesting position for sure. And this is one that is made more fascinating by the fact that uh, there's probably a very poor scouting report for North American players on Moyes. We know he's mm -hmm. won a lot overseas, but we haven't seen a lot of it. We haven't seen a lot of his games, or at least I haven't. Perhaps they exist out there. But you can get a good idea of what traps will and won't work on which opponents based on your play against them in the past, what kind of things they do and don't seem to know. Moyes is a big wild card, so... Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're Alec, you probably have to assume he knows those hooks and he knows them correctly, given his rating, given his accolades, but it, it's hard. The fog of war is maddening against uh, unknown opponents. Right. Yeah, it, it's difficult. Um, chat pointing out that Alec also skipped over Wedgie there, which was certainly a choice. Um, moved a little bit quick for us to talk about all the options here. Moyes looks like he's going for voltage here. Kind of blowing up this rack with the G and the V, scoring some good points. Uh, maybe not really thinking about a couple other options he had there that might be a little bit better, like Gatvol or Galvo. Um, voltage is pretty solid, though. You might really want to hold that E, but in lieu of those kind of obscure words, voltage is just fine, I think. Yeah, all of those plays felt pretty similar. I don't think there was a clear advantage over, like for one over the other. So sometimes mm -hmm. just play long. Now Alec doesn't know my rack at all because I played off nearly all of my tiles. Like yes. just get rid of that, that partial knowledge. And especially if you can reach in on a six tile pull and pull a bingo that plays for like 95, uh, you really ought to do that if you can. 164 to 167, the score we have now and Moyes uh, with indicted on his rack, but Alec setting up CWM, and this feels like a no-brainer play uh, for Alec. I don't think there's any choice but to play Coom, and that's going to yield the big play from Moyes next turn. All right, so Voltage into Coom. I've messed up my quackle. I, I screwed up that lost turn, so I'm uh, scrambling right now. But Voltage mm -hmm. and then Coom and then Indicted coming now. Um, and we're all caught up there. Indicted, 89 points for Moyes, his only playable bingo. This puts him up big, 253 to 188 over Alec. Yeah, huge pull after Voltage, and apologies, I had a little bit to say about Alex's play, but had my microphone muted for dog interruption in the background. Um, 
yeah, Coom, I think you put down in about 10 seconds and don't really think any harder about it. But great for Moyes, pulling the bingo, pulling back into a commanding lead. Uh, this game is swinging back and forth very quickly, but cool for Moyes to be back in the driver's seat. Uh, back in the driver's seat for right now, but a good pull for Alec means Alec will be bingoing right back. Uh, unedging plays to the G in Jived and not what we're seeing from Alec. Untinged also plays through the T. This is 66. Unedging is 74, but unedging looks horrific to me as a word. I would pull the trigger on 66 know it instead of unedging and rolling the dice in five point challenge yeah looks like he did switch it to untinged instead of detuning which he had initially put down uh taking those couple extra points good switcheroo there um unedging does leave two vowels next to double letter scores maybe that's maybe he considered it and backed out on it looks like Moyes is going to throw five points to him as well for untinged um but yeah, there's an argument to be made for maybe not putting down on edging. Uh, but eh, probably not going to be a huge difference for Alec. All right, so five extra points on the challenge of untinged. But if you're even a little bit unsure, go ahead and throw that challenge. You never lose a turn or lose a game because of the five extra points. <laughs> never, yeah, surely not. Never, not once. And Moyes with a fun turn. I, I love racks like this. A-C-E-H-N-T-X is his rack. So you can score points with the X. You can score points and hold the X. But everything you can do on racks like this makes you smile. Mm -hmm. Chanted plays to the D and indicted for 42, holding an X. That feels awesome. Hex plays alongside indicted, making H-E and E-D for 37, holding A, C, and T. That feels awesome. Everything you do here, here feels good, but you have to make the play that feels the most good. In your eyes, Chris, is that holding the X or cashing it now? That's a really good question. Honestly, it... So Quackle was saying this is a very, very straightforward choice for Chanted. I'm pretty sure I agree, but blowing up this very nice rack with some really good spots available on the board feels a little strange, but it's also worth thinking about what Chanted does to the board. Hang a C out there. Um, the other H is still unseen, so a CH underlap is possible. But uh, yeah, I think Chanted scores so well, hold the X, you're almost certainly going to score a bunch next turn. It's pretty difficult to pass that up. I wonder how poorly canted and holding on to the H for that spot sim. So it's way down. It's a 12 point delta between the plays. And actually, they still sim 12 apart. I think the H just doesn't actually help that much in tandem with the X. And I think knocking out the back hook on Spirea and avoiding a five or six letter play down back hooking it also limits a lot of scoring option. This board went from big and open to very closed very fast. And if Chanted comes down, the board's going to be super duper closed. That happened quick. Yeah. And I think if Chanted comes down, Moise is happy to be up by 41. It looks like that would put him up by after the challenge points, perhaps. I don't know if the challenge points are yet reflected in our overlay here. So maybe up by slightly less. But I would prefer to be in Moise's, or sorry, Moise's. How do you portalize this? Moise's Moise. position after Chanted, uh, for sure. I, I'm pretty sure that would be my choice. But he, he's Chanted, considering like, other stuff. Yeah, well, this would be playing T-A-X on the right side of Swale, making A-T-L-A and E-X. That keeps the powerful C-H together. And it scores 35. That doesn't feel half bad either. But Chanted for 42 just feels way better. I... I think I see some really cute stuff that Moyes may be thinking about, though. If you do play tax on the left side over there, you're keeping the CH for some potential extensions off of the EX to the triple. That's a little bit of a long shot, but you're not that far off of things like, well, the Gs are gone, but it's very reasonable to maybe pull something extending the EX to the triple word, especially holding the CH. That might yeah, be a little bit too cute, but that maybe it looks like that's what he's thinking about, the way he set up his rack. 
exarch, exarchy, exchange possibilities, but I think there's just too few possibilities. He's going to look and yeah. try to figure out what else might I be able to draw in that spot. Luckily, I have an anagram where I can just figure it out. There's not actually that much. The EXCH combination looks powerful, but I think as Scrabble players, we're all just drawn to the word exchange <laughs> very <Yeah>. often. <laughs> Um, uh, Chanted, I think, is still the top option for Moyes, though I'm, I'm yeah. pleased that he's spending his time really trying to milk every possible point out of an awesome rack. Chanted's probably the way to do that, but you want to make sure you optimize the goodies you just drew. For sure, yeah. And, and this, with so many spots available on this board, I think this is definitely a turn where it's worth taking the time to look through all the options. Looks like he has, and he's landed on Chanted, which I believe I fully agree with. Lots of other options, but Chanted looks like the best one. Yep. Moy's uh, showing exactly why he's had all the success that he has, making another turn correctly in this one. Moy's leads 295 to 259. Alec E-I-I-M-Q-R-T. I don't know why he hasn't already played QI. Now he's going to play QI. Excellent. Scrabble's easy sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. Yep, there it goes. QI, move on with your life. And what is Moyes going to draw into his X? B, J, N, O, oh, E, A, and a blank. He just drew Banjaxes. Oh, that doesn't quite fit. Oh. <laughs> that would have been absolutely disgusting. Draw the yeah. century. Banjaxes fit on the board somehow. Yeah, that would be another statement play to make in this game for Moyes. Not quite there, but he still has, again, lots of goodies and some very good spots to consider using them. So just the very standard play here is jab on the left side of jive, making AG and BY. That mm -hmm. is 34 points. It holds E, N, X, blank. The problem with that play is there's really one spot to score on this board, and it's to hit that top right triple word square. And mm -hmm. if you make that G into AG, then you open up a ton of back hooks. There's Aga, there's Age, there's Ago, there's Ags. You're just, Alec gets to play there next turn and he gets to play for 30 or 35. We're yeah. back in a neutral game. So you'd like to avoid giving that spot up if you can. There's another way for Moyes to score and unclutter this rack. That's B E N J beneath Spirea <laughs> with three underlaps for 29, holding A X blank. Or he can cash it all in right now. Jaxi, J-A-X blank E, plays for 61 down from that top right triple word. Given that this board is really, really nasty and shut down, I think Jaxi is going to be very hard to lose after. And I think it's actually appropriate to blow all of this rack up and just take the 61 right now. But jab makes sense too. This is a really hard turn for boy Moyes. Yeah, I... <laughs> This is a strange position. Jaxi really looks kind of tempting. Holding the blank is nice, but in his position, he's not as pressured to bingo later with it. Blowing it now for a lot of points, and more importantly, what it does to the board, completely closing off that corner, is worth entertaining, but looks like he's going to go for B and J there instead, which... Definitely worth consideration. Clutters up that part of the board a little bit more. Um, basically closes off all eights except for from the E in the swale as well. Uh, I might go for, yeah, I don't know. I think I like Benj better, actually. Jab just gives too much back. Jab won a sim by nearly seven points, but that mm -hmm. just felt really weird to me. And I know Quackle really struggles with its simulation on closed off boards like this. It just assumes your opponent will magically open and you'll get your bingo down, which is not how real life works often. Okay. But I, I, a tough turn there. Benj, Jab, and Jaxi all make sense. I would have played Jaxi. Chris probably would have played Benj. That's one where your mileage may vary and a bunch of people will tell you a bunch of different stuff. Just kind of an unsolvable turn, your preference. But Benj, the decision for Moyes, he leads 324 to 283. Alec with E-E-I-M-O-R-T. This is a rack that bingos on wide open boards, but this is not a wide open board. And Alec's got to try to find a way to squeeze points out of this rack. Staying in bingo range is not really even something you need to think about in this situation if you're Alec. Yeah, you want good tiles to have flexibility, but you don't need to go fishing 
not on a board like this, not unless you're going to open up. Alec has a play that stands out to me quite a bit. He mm -hmm. has a play, ways to play off EMO in different spots. One of them is through the blink in Mafiosi, making Mome and Ebook for 22. That creates a new bingo line. And with a small deficit like this, maybe that's something Alec needs to do, get a little volatility on a board that has none. But if he feels like he can sneak this one out in the trenches with intermediate plays, P-O-E-M makes a lot of sense down from the P and out rope for 21. He's opting for neither. He's opting to score as many points as he can right now. And there's nothing wrong with that approach in this situation. R-I-M-A-E is 26. Alex right. says, I'm not going to even try to bingo anymore. I'm going to score, 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 and see if I can't catch up with a good draw. Yeah, after a lengthy sim, that one's actually coming out on top for me, at least with how I currently have it configured. So that's actually not a play Quackle even found on its own. I had to punch it in. Um, interesting choice. I, I was initially taken a little bit with Mime or Mom through the blank M and Mafiosi. Uh, but what it might give back to Moise is unsavory. Uh, especially given lots of nice things left in the pool. So I actually think I kind of like uh, RIMAE here. Yeah, no, a good option. And closed boards just change all of the rules of Scrabble completely. Um, I've been waiting to use this metaphor for like weeks, and I finally found a chance to use it. Uh, I, I play some competitive Pokemon here and there, and there's a move in Pokemon called Trick Room, where all of a sudden... The Pokemon who goes the slowest is now the fastest, and the one that's the fastest is now the slowest. All the rules change, and that's, I think, a great metaphor for a closed board in Scrabble. All the rules change. Suddenly, like, an S is the difference between being able to do nothing and everything. Or suddenly, mm -hmm. bingo-prone tiles are the worst thing you can have on your rack, because they all score one, and there's nowhere to bingo, and you just want to score 30 every turn. Closed boards are the trick room of Scrabble and Alec adjusting very well. All of a sudden, there's no need to hold EIRT. I'm mm -hmm. just scoring points. Yeah, yeah, that's the other reason I think uh, RAMAE was potentially the superior choice there. Stop banking on the bingo, just try to outrun Moyes and score a bunch of points. Uh, with this rack, however, after Moyes drops tax very quickly, a pretty straightforward turn for him, uh, scoring a lot of points is suddenly a lot more difficult and now the game is incrementally more uh incrementally closer to the end and he's got unsatisfying options but ratio is still there for him as he's looking at r-a-t-i-o yeah alec has to be displeased on that you feel like okay i'm just going to score points keep the board tight and oh oh you had the x and you had 30 when mm -hmm. you were supposed to have 15 or so oh that sucks but, you know, that happens sometimes. Alec dropping ratio down on the top. R-A-T-O-O -O is also valid, but I feel like making G-I here makes it a lot harder for Moyes to obstruct the R and the A that are now floating out in space. So perhaps that is why he passed up on Ritu and held the more inferior O tile. Ratio, the play from Alec, makes it 336, 359, and Moyes, with FZ blank on his rack, needs to keep scoring pressure on and stay ahead in this one. Yeah, Moyes has another very strange position to think through. Uh, end of the game is now quickly approaching, only five in the bag, seven of which are vowels, though Moyes really wishes he had maybe one or two more of those with what he's currently sitting on. Um, he's got some. He's got some options to think about. Um, he could try to score with the Z to the A in ratio with a couple of different options. Forza, they're pretty straightforward. Could cash the blank for Zonula for 68, but that gives back a lot. He's just going to plunk the Z for 22 I and completely this. kill that part of the board, which I, I also this. like. Yeah, I like that a lot. Uh, Zonula, the play to the A for 68 points. People saying that feels like game over. Like, no, that's how you lose. You play Zonula, you empty the bag, and then you get bingoed out. Z yes. takes three letters behind it in CSW, A, O, and E. So you're, if your opponent has an out bingo, Zonula is a game losing play every time you make it if Alec has a bingo. And look, Alec has a bingo. If Moyes autopilots that turn, plays Zonula and praise, 
he lost the game. This it's almost impossible for Moyes to lose after. Alec can try to make a new line, and then Moyes can block the line or bingo in the line and win. This is awesome Scrabble. It feels counterintuitive. So many people pounce on a Forza or a Zanula. This is how you win games. Great stuff. Yes, that, that's really good foresight from Moyes. Looking at the pool, realizing bingos are there. Sure, Alec just played off five tiles, and so his rec is somewhat less curated than it might be, but... Really, the only way he loses the game there is playing something like Forza or Zonula, giving back that bingo, just nurse your lead. Take the lead you have, lock up this game, and yeah, Alec really has no foolproof options here. He probably has to just throw something out. There may be some clever stuff he can do to make difficult to block lanes, but Moyes has probably secured the game with that one play, and that's just fantastic situational awareness. The fact that Moyes played ZA pretty quickly has yes. to take away a lot of my hope if I'm in Alex's shoes here. Looking at that unseen pool, F-H-I-L-N-O-R-S-U-Y blank. Like if the blank is in the bag and he's got crappy tiles, I'm very much in this game. But because he played Za so fast, he didn't really even think about much else. Uh, he's probably got the blank. He didn't think very hard. Uh, this is Alex's best stab, I think, at the game. Just open up a new line. Hope you pull that blank and see what happens. But we know that it's been on Moise's rack for several turns, and we know that Moise is going to have another pretty easy block here to coast to a victory. Just something like OOF and FAB will more than do this one for him. For sure, yeah. He's got a bunch of options that will certainly win the game. All he has to do is address that spot. Um, are there even... I need to double check if there's even any sevens in the bag for Alec to have here. I don't um, think so. I actually think, yeah, there's no. nothing. There's no permutation of those eight Alec can have that bingos. And that's probably what Moise is spending his time doing right now and or double checking his tracking. Uh, but yeah, he's locked this one up. You can see he's double checking what's in the bag right now. And all he's got to do is coast. Alec can't even have a bingo. Moyes might still play it safe and block off that spot just in case he's mistracked or isn't spotting something. But yep, he with with a simple little play like ZA, he's locked this one up, and that's fantastic to see. But this game really impressed me. Moyes really impressed me in this. Uh, there are some lessons that you can learn in Scrabble, and there are some things that are just unteachable. The, the level of gamesmanship. When should I block? When should I open? When should I control the board? When should I open the board? That's something you can't really teach. You have to be really smart. You have to play a lot, identify the patterns and the flow of the game. You can't teach somebody how to do that. And that seems to be the final thing that some people put together in their games. Anybody can sit down and study words for a thousand hours and memorize every seven and eight in the lexicon. Sure, it's hard to do, but there are 20 or 30 people out there probably who have memorized every bingo. You have to differentiate yourself, not with your word knowledge. I'm always missed caboodle. You have to differentiate, differentiate yourself with strategy, with figuring out how to navigate the trenches. And he navigated each one of those terms excellently. He might have had some word knowledge mistakes, but that just shows even more potential once he gets a get better grasp on the lexicon. The unteachable stuff, he put on a clinic here today. Everybody can learn something from the way he played this one. Yeah, the, this was really impressive. Even with the lost challenge, he's playing well enough to lock this one up, uh, even a couple of turns from the end. But yeah, j just watching the strategy displayed in this game was far more impressive than any of the words we've seen. And there are some cool words on this board, don't get me wrong, but watching players make the correct strategical decisions is always what's going to make me understand how good they are as a player yeah and just just mastering the unteachable stuff shows uh man that's that's just that's really nice that's mm -hmm. really nice it's always refreshing to see someone who can play the game well rather than someone who's memorized a thousand words or a million words or whatever gotten up to two thousand and still doesn't understand the ebbs and flows I was really impressed. Yep. Yeah, and even now, like, the, the game is almost certainly locked up. Anyone can take a brief look at this. Any one of these players level can take a brief look at this. But Moyes taking his time, going through the end games, likely trying to maximize the spread he can pull out of this game. 
that's what you have to do in these long tournaments as well. It's not just strategy within one game. It's understanding, well, every little point here matters. I should take my time. I should use this last minute 30, you know, plus what he's used on this turn already. Maximize what he can get out of this game. Good to see. And make sure you don't accidentally overlook <laughs> anything crazy. That EX down at the bottom of the board could yield a 60-point play, so make absolutely certain there's nothing there. Make yes. absolutely certain there's not a bingo you have to block. Uh, it, do it right. You, yes. you played this game so well to continue holding on to your, your good position. Make sure you slam the door shut. Take your time and do that. That's what Moise is doing here. Uh, I do want to get the thank you train rolling once again. This is going to conclude our morning session. We'll be back with the afternoon session. All NWL play this afternoon starting at 2.30 Eastern time. But this is going to be the final game uh, where Chris Kanick is in the booth with me, and I try never to say nice things to my brother, but Chris, <laughs> it has been a pleasure. You've been great, getting some compliments on your voice, your mic, and the stuff you say. So uh, thanks for taking the time out. I know it's your anniversary weekend, but that's how committed Chris is to this. Forget <laughs> anniversaries. I'm commentating on Scrabble. Pick that girlfriend. <laughs> thanks, Chris. We appreciate it. I appreciate being here. Thanks for having me on. Uh, the casual observer might disagree with my priorities, uh, knowing that it's my anniversary weekend. Uh, but don't worry, I've cleared it with the girlfriend. She is on board with me doing this. We've already celebrated earlier in the week. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm just happy to have the opportunity. Thanks for having me on, Matt. Yeah, of course, and we will bring you back. Uh, I'm sure I'll be doing more of this, so we'll bring you back in at, at some point. But uh, And then thanks to everybody else putting this together. Christian and Andrew running the whole operation deserve infinite thanks as they fix everything for me immediately. Uh, they do all the hard work. I just put on the headset, look mediocre, and make some dumb puns. Uh, they do all the hard work. So thanks to them as well. Thanks to Chris. Thanks to everybody watching us. we got 219 viewers on a sleepy Sunday morning. So appreciate y'all coming out. And I appreciate you also showing up for our afternoon session. I think the first game this afternoon is Mac Miller and Joey Kraftchik. Ooh. So I know you're going to be back at 2.30 for that. That's going to be nuts. Yep. Yeah, we've got another battle of the young players here, both of which I've got some personal history with as well. Actually, not Mac, but Joey Kraftchik definitely is some personal history there. I will be tuned into the stream watching that, though I don't have the pleasure of doing the commentary for it. Ben Schoenbrunn catching strays for absolutely no reason as <laughs> Alec finding nice, sneaky Yuka and Benji die. Oh, <laughs> He actually set it down. Alec, I appreciate that. Uh, anytime somebody can entertain me with their tiles on chat, I appreciate it. And I especially like the people who stay entertaining and upbeat as they lose a game. Alec is in first place in this tournament, and he's still having fun. Uh, you always like to see that in Scrabble. If you're not having fun over the board, I don't think you should be over the board. I agree. At the end of the day, this is a game. Um, Obviously, everyone wants to do their best, play their best, maximize their performance in these tournaments. But when it doesn't cost you anything, I think we can all afford to have a little bit of fun with it as well. If you're not having fun over the board, there's still plays to, or still plenty of ways to be involved and around. Run a tournament, watch a tournament, do commentary like me. That's the reason I started doing commentary. I got so bad that I wasn't having fun anymore. This is way more fun. <laughs> way less stress. I like it up here a lot more than being in a high pressure situation. So yeah, uh, there's plenty of ways to get involved. But again, if you're not having fun, eh, take a couple months off. Watch, go do something mm -hmm. else, maybe touch some grass. Scrabble will always be there sitting, waiting. Uh, we continue to do our thing in the Scrabble scene. And I, actually, that's something you did, Chris. You stepped away from Scrabble for about a decade and are recently yep. kind of re-emerging. So uh, and Chris, a, a great testament to if if I if Scrabble's not my thing right now, life is happening, other priorities are happening, well, hey, you can always come on back. It might not be smooth sailing at first. You might be rusty. <laughs> but I think you'll find that if you haven't studied in a while and you're just playing for fun, it's way more fun that way. What do you mm -hmm. say, Chris? I completely agree, and that was definitely my go-to excuse as I was playing Phony 3s in my first tournament back. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it was nice knowing that you know, there's always a community of people I can come back to when I had more time for it. And over the last year or two, I've found myself in that situation. So here I can, here I am crawling back and just happy to be involved both as a player and now as a commentator. Um, 
you know, I've been hitting the Austin Club, some of the Texas area tournaments, uh, which have got an exciting one coming up as well. But I'll let you plug that one maybe later. But yeah, I mean, it's it's been great. I played a lot of Scrabble maybe a decade or so ago, and I'm trying to play a lot more now. It's It's been nice to come back. Well, Scrabble's always here. And if you're one of the people who hasn't really been playing a lot recently and thinking about maybe getting back into the game at some point, like, this is your call to action. Uh, we're still here. We're still having fun. We're still making words. And uh, we'd love to see you back at some point. It's always super cool to see people in the new chapters of the lives that, or of their lives that they've unearthed, the new jobs they have, the new people in their lives, the new dogs they have. Please share dog pictures with me. I'm never going to say no to a cute dog picture. Never going to say no to an ugly dog picture. I just want dog pictures, man. So uh, come on back to Scrabble if you haven't played in a while. Catch us at a tournament. Go hang out at a club. Or just show up. We'll, we'll go drink a beer with you or something. It's always cool to see old friends come back over the board. For sure. And especially that beer offer stands for me, uh, as Matt's been alluding to. Big fan. Oh, hey. Alex showing us the blank is a you. Very helpful. Uh, even He wasn't the one to play the blank, but he was hopefully showing us on the stream there. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate being called a tater in the booth, even though that might have been directed at Matt. Uh, I consider myself a potato as well. Thank you. Yeah, the, the great tater or something like that. The great commentator. I don't know. Um, yeah, some I'm like that. There, there's, there's a fun there. Lunch. Please get me out of this booth. This one <laughs> is over 428 for Moyes, 366 for Alec. This win has to feel great for Moyes. And let's cut to overhead mic, see if we can catch anything from these folks. I'm not confused. At low voltage and devoted. What's the second one? Devoted. Two T's. I don't know. Something like that. Because I've been missing bonuses and then um, when I check later, that's the word. I'm like, okay, now it's this, this time, and then when I played it, it's not working. There's also Gatvol. Oh, yeah. It's a Gavol, it's not a word. Correct. It's Lavolt. Yes, that's fine. Because I would always type Gavolt first. I would always type anagram Gavolt first and then Gatvol. So yeah. that's tough. Yes, yeah, thirty. Funny on the This block really sore. Yeah, I mean, I had to do it. I had an F O R C L N something. F O R. Do you have the blank? Yeah, the blank. Okay, and a Z. Yeah, Z. Yeah, Z. And then I picked up the S or something. Yeah, I picked the S. Okay. Oh, and the RS with loop peeps, and then you draw the H. No, H was the last one. Yeah. As I said, you, oh, draw, yeah, yeah, you yeah, draw, yeah, draw the H. No, no, yeah. yeah, first it's move, and then I pick the H. Yeah. So, floor, F O R L N S blank. That was my second last one. Yeah. I got no point to work, nothing. Played six, got a bonus. Played seven, got this for the next. I wanted you to put the Z here. Hmm? <laughs> yeah. Should add this. There is no outrope. Yeah, <laughs> there would have been outrope is a noun. Approve, I think approve. Because then, again, when I get this hand again, I always write outrope and then approve it. I think I should stop hand. I just realized I missed wedgie when I played drive. So. Oh. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> you played it for the five and the god. <laughs> no, I, I played it for this. Oh, this is okay. Uh, I mean, like, I didn't think... see it until I started laying down between them. Yeah, yes. I'm, I'm so rested in it. I just cannot recall all the low pro high property words. So, I was like, boys, mm -hmm. they'd like to talk to you on stream. Yeah, sure. Uh, if you'd like to talk afterwards. Yeah, sure. Didn't play no special. Uh, yeah. to it. Right, so I think you're picking up our production team that we're going to try to get a little interview of Moyes. Again, a player who has so many accolades from overseas in the youth scene and on the Pakistan Scrabble scene, but one relatively unknown to us. We're going to try to get to know him a little bit better as this win puts him tied in the lead of this CSW field. Great record of nine and two. Welcome to the States, Moyes. We'll hear from him in just a moment before we cut away from lunch, once we get the headset on. All right, well, uh, as promised, we have the winner of that awesome game on headset, Moyes Ulabai coming from Pakistan. Moyes, this is Matt Kanek on stream. Just tell us how you feel knocking off one of the top North American players and the guy in first place right now. How does this win feel to you? Well, um, I just came in cold in this tournament, so I was I've, I've never prepared for it. I think it's it feels um, surreal to be at the top and then beating one of the top players <laughs> in the first place. So um, I think it was a good game, and I, I think I um, I got all the all the right tiles at the right time. Even when I was um, and I, when I phoned the next game, the next turn was also um, I picked up a, a binger right after. So I think um, I just got a, a little lucky. <laughs> Definitely a little luck, but we were impressed in the booth that the whole second half of the game, you had good tiles, but we were so impressed with the way you were able to optimize every point out of them. Your play of Chanted holding on to the X, your play of Benj holding on to powerful tiles, knowing you could cash them in next turn. It's one thing to draw well. It's another thing to draw well and maximize every point out of them. And that's what we saw you do. That was impressive. The other turn that really impressed us in the booth was your very first move. You drew an interesting opening rack, and we saw you weren't alpha gramming, you weren't scrambling the letters, you just put your head down in your hands, paused, and then dropped the bingo after a few minutes. Tell us what that yeah. was about. I was almost convinced that there's nothing in it, and I was about to um, throw IF away or something similar. But then, um, I don't know, somehow, if I just um, recalled mafiosi, I'm like, oh, mafiosi is a word. Mafioso is a word, then mafiosi should also be a word. Because um, the OSI and OSO word, they, they kind of are in a combination. I don't know the um, the science or the logic behind it. But yeah, so I was like, okay, yeah, this should be a word. And I mean, throughout the tournament, I've been trying to play bonuses. But then because I'm too rusty at the moment, I don't. I just, just skip them and then I don't play them. And then later on when I check, those end up to be words. So I was like, okay, this is my chance if I don't play it. This at this moment, I would be regretting later on. So might as well just might as well just play. What's the worst that can happen? <laughs> okay. Wow, and then, that makes it extra fun. You weren't even yeah. certain that it was good, but pretty sure. And of course, connecting the OSO, it must go to OSI. That's fascinating. Yeah, yeah. and uh, then uh, one of the previous games, I was um, playing with Tony Leah, and um, I was I think 100, 120 um, ahead, um, and then he had two bonuses in the. The, towards the end of the game, one was 90 and then another was 120. But I think that was also a mistake that I had a chicken out on a, on a bingo and then he played at the exact same spot and then I lost. So after that game, I, I realized that no matter what comes to my mind, I just play it. No matter what. <laughs> that's why comes I just, to yeah, no matter what. That's why I played Kill like, It's not a word, but then I don't know why, but I just still played it. So I, as, as I said, I just came in cold in the, in the tournament and I'm, I'm playing like a casual player i'm, I'm playing for the fun <laughs> and then You're playing for the fun i'm we not looking about... at the results <laughs> yeah don't worry about the results i always feel like when you don't worry about the results as much that's when you start getting the good yeah. ones when you can uh you know relax a little bit more tell us a little bit about coming in cold i know you have a lot of accolades overseas but it sounds like you're not studying right now is there a mm -hmm. uh, real life going on or taking a break yeah. from the game the so situation? i think um i stopped studying five years ago after the 29, 2019 Worlds, because I um, then moved to Germany for my um, 
master's. And then um, life happened and then um, I finished my degree. I'm, I'm still working right now. So um, yeah, I, I really don't get enough time. And also there aren't that many players in Germany of that level. So um, basically I could say I'm the, yeah, I'm, I'm technically the highest rated player in Germany too. So you don't get, I don't get enough of a um, competition and there, and there, there aren't that many tournaments also. There's only one tournament that happens once a year in Berlin. So I just get to play that tournament where um, players from around Europe come to um, come to play. Um, yeah, so lack of practice, lack of word knowledge, and then there's no motivation <laughs> to to learn words because once you're a um, high rated player, then you don't like to study because you know no matter what you end up winning. <laughs> so um, I think yeah, um, this is why I um, lost the motivation, and also because of um, other things, I don't have enough time to play or to practice or to study words. Yeah, well, life always happens, but Scrabble is always there for people to fall back on. And it seems like you have a great muscle memory of just what to do, how to control a board, how to optimize the racks. Even if the words aren't quite there, the strategy never really goes away. Moise, we're going to let you step away and uh, enjoy what's left of this lunch break. But we want to take the time or thank you for taking the time to hop on stream, giving us that game. Best of luck in the rest of the tournament. And I hope we see more of you on the stream later on. Thanks, Moise. Thanks. Thanks for the great coverage. <laughs> and uh, we're going to cut back over to the booth for just a minute. But winding down coverage here as uh, we are going into lunch break, once again, we'll be back at 2.30 Eastern time. That's where we're going to continue our coverage. We're switching over to the NWL field. Uh, but we do want to say goodbye, not to Moise as the chat, or, <laughs> but, but to Chris Kanick. There it is, updating right on cue. Chris, thanks again for the time. Do you have any parting words of wisdom for the audience before we set you free? I think it's just play the off. And I, yeah, y'all is what I saw first. So you have to block that. Uh, Chris, you are on mute. So whatever words those <laughs> Oh, no. Uh, I was just saying that. I hope I get the chance to play jerk against you on stream as the Ranky brothers did. Yes, I would love to play jerk or a number of other words on you as well. <laughs> Sibling rivalry, always real. We're going to wind down for there. Chris, thanks for your time. And everybody watching, thanks for tuning in. We will see you again in an hour and 20 minutes. Adios. <laughs>